Okay, so today we are going to discuss the clinical topic that is empyemathoresis. Empyemathoresis is also known as pyothorax. Empyemathoresis. Or pyothorax. Both empyemathoresis and pyothorax is the synonyms. Both both term is used interchangeably while expressing the. So what is the definition? What is what is empyemathoresis? Accumulation or collection of pus in the pleural cavity is known as empyemathoresis. Collection of excessive amount of pus in pleural cavity is known as empyemathoresis or pyothorax. But from where this accumulation of pus takes place, from where this pus come, we will discuss accumulation of in the etiopathogenesis, accumulation of pus in pleural cavity. So before going to etiopathogenesis or how the pus comes in pleural cavity, I will tell you uh, the causes. Causes in itself, etiopathogenesis cause will be discussed. So, suppose this is the left lung, this is not anatomically correct. Okay, and lungs are made up of multiple alveoli, multiple alveoli. Multiple alveoli. And there is pleura. Pleura has the two layer. One is visceral layer of the pleura and one is parietal layer of the fulera. So, visceral layer is attached to the parenchyma of the lung here and this one is parietal. So, in 70, about 70% 70 of the cases, it is pneumonia which leads to pyothorax. How, what is pneumonia? What is pneumonia? Pneumonia is infection, inflammation and infection of the lung alveoli in which the alveoli of the lung is filled with the pus, is filled with the pus and become solidated. Assume here is all the alveoli gets filled with the pus, then the alveolar membrane of this alveoli, this alveoli will irritate the visceral, visceral layer of the pleura. Irritation of the visceral layer of pleura will stimulate their inflammatory activity. An inflammatory activity in the visceral pleura meaning mediators of inflammation will come here many mediator of inflammation will come here all in the visceral pleura and will start secreting the fluid and this fluid initially will be serious in character will be watery in the character so every empyomathoresis or pyothorax usually initially start with collection of serious fluid that is known as pleural effusion collection of fluid in the pleural cavity is known as pleural effusion pleural effusion 
and then after this the fibroblast and collagen molecule will come and there is deposition of fibrin molecule within the pericardial cavity uh, peri um, pleural cavity and these fibrin strands these fibrin strands will attach will attach this visceral pleura to the parietal pleura and this attachment of this attachment of visceral pleura to the parietal pleura by the fibrin molecule causes formation of loculation formation of loculation and with the time with the time formation of loculation and with the time many fibroblasts will come many fibroblasts many fibroblasts will come here along with collagen molecule along with collagen molecule and this fibrin molecule will increase in an amount with collagen with mix with collagen will forming the scar type of tissue and this scar type of tissue will will fill in this cavity all of the cavity the all of the cavity and it will also the fibroblast tissue will also the fibroblast tissue will also grow in uh, parenchyma of the lung parenchyma the, this fibroblast tissue will also grow in the fibroblast the parenchyma of the lung and this growth of in growing tissue will increase the lung it will increase the lung and it will hamper the expansion of the lung inflation and deflation of the lung that is entrapment of the lung parenchyma that will re relatively reduce the movement of lung during our compliance of the lung during inspiratory and expiratory phase so this phase when when the alveoli will irritate the visceral pleura and causes uh, causes secretion of serious serious type of fluid this phase is known as exudative phase this phase is known as exudative phase exudative phase and when there is formation of the fibrin and there is loculation in the pleural cavity this phase is known as fibro purulent phase and when this collagen of and deposition of collagen and fibrous tissue and entrapment of the lung parenchyma these this phase is known as this phase is known as organizing phase organizing phase organizing phase so in 70 what are the causes what are the causes of pyothorax pneumonia in about 70% of the cases pneumonia usually pneumonia usually is bacterial maybe viral or other infectious organism may take part in this inflammatory activity the second is usually heterogenic and traumatic okay heterogenic and third point we will discuss in traumatic heterogenic heterogenic when there is accumulation of some amount of pleural um, serous fluid in the pleural cavity and there is um, there is indicated some uh, that uh, somebody try to take biopsy 
biopsy from the fluid fluid then needle biopsy then it may in fact and the pulmonary effusion may convert into pyothorax needle biopsy usg guided thorax usg guided aspiration when the effusion is massive moderate to massive and patient is symptomatic and and patient goes for usg guided aspiration so there is chance so there is chance that it can develop a pleural effusion into the pyothorax when there is when wedge resection of the lung surgery of the lung that is wedge resection of the lung segmentectomy of the lung or even lobectomy of the lung segmentectomy and lobectomy of the lung removal may cause lung surgery so lung surgery like wedge resection wedge resection segmentectomy we know that lungs is composed of segments so removal of the segment is known as segmentectomy and removal of lobe of the lung is known as lobectomy oesophageal surgery when there is oesophageal surgery there is a chance that infection and irritation in the pleural cavity may lead to formation of pyothorax when there is a trauma chest trauma it may in when there is chest trauma it can disturb the immunity and immunity of the pleura and the inflammatory activity will start due to trauma contusion or any erosion of the pleura and this inflammatory activity will lead to aggravative phase pyonopulmonary phase organizing phase causing pyothorax when the cause is neither pneumonia is present neither any atherogenic procedure has been done and there is no history of trauma then the infection must have come from and there is pyothorax of course in pyothorax then this infection must have come from adjacent organ to so what are the adjacent organ <coughs> below the below the lung there is a diaphragm so sub diaphragmatic abscess sub sub diaphragmatic abscess may spread into the pleural cavity and cause pyothorax mediastinum mediastinum the mediastinitis pericardial if you uh, pericardial effusion or pus in the pericardial cavity may irritate the pleura and may lead to pyothorax in right side liver is present so liver abscess liver abscess in the right side liver abscess make a spread into the pleural cavity and cause pyothorax cholangitis inflammation of the duct bile duct or biliary tree is known as cholangitis and so the cholangitis is very much adjacent to the diaphragm and it may irritate the diaphragm and irritation of diaphragm will lead to irritation of the pleura that may proceed into pyothorax may proceed into pyothorax so adjacent organ and if there is no uh, inflammatory changes Uh, in adjacent organ then the infection must have come from 
the blood transmitted through the blood by blood infection anywhere in the bloody can lead to a spread of the infection in pleural cavity and can cause and can cause pyothorax so in next in next class in next lecture in next video i will tell you how to differentiate pleural fluid that is it is serous or it is exudative in pleural effusion there is serous fluid that is transudate that is known as transudate and that has to be differentiated from the exudate that is the pus containing material so how to biochemically we will rule out these two will be discussed in next video thanks for watching video if you want to uh, watch view more video you like the video comment the video and subscribe the channel thanks for watching